Like this guy actually has seems to have like some sort of consideration for humanity, which is great, and that makes you different feel different about like killing him, fighting him. Hi everyone, I'm Marco in Orlando, and today we're gonna take a look at Final Fantasy VI and some of its characters. And before I move on, however, uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel and like the video and share the video. I am posting Final Fantasy VI videos regularly and also am plan to start other Final Fantasy games and PlayStation 4 games until we get to PlayStation 5 in the late 2020. Now, um, today we're gonna go with Final Fantasy VI and the character development is specifically targeted at the, the early, early video game stages of Leo, who we just were introduced to, and now he's got a conflict with the mad scientist uh, crazy villain Kafka and I love how that dynamic plays out together So let's get into it a little bit and just see just an early interaction between them that Illustrates where we're going where the story is going now right here. You see Leo talking to one of his soldiers and the soldier comes in basically as a heartless You know drone kind of saying that these guys do not deserve their mercy and that the people who they are attacking um, have no reason to to be you know shown mercy because they're their enemies and anyone who is an enemy of the Empire and Gestal um, Becomes someone that is expendable. However, Leo kind of uh, uh, Says no that that's not the way things are. This is just kind of separating Leo from Kafka and uh, You know kind of establishing him as a sympathetic kind of character which you'll see more of later on um, the reason that I think is important to, to talk about is that it, it shows that the storytelling of Final Fantasy isn't a bunch of cliches. I mean, the thing is, like something like that is now a cliche, but when there was, this was happening, that's not, that didn't happen all the time, where you have a bad guy that you actually sympathize with. And that's something that I think was great about this, the, the, the game. And we're going to see Kafka here show up and see how he uh, kind of deals with Leo. And you're also going to see me have a little bit of a... Revelation about uh, remembering kind of what is about to happen. All right, so enjoy it. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my God! Yes, yes. Oh, I cannot get over this. This is a great story. I think it's important to point out right there why I was so, uh, su not surprised, but so, you know, how cool it was what I was remembering. Um, this goes to what I've been saying where these stories are not obvious back then. And obviously I'm reacting this way now. Um, but I think one of the things that makes Final Fantasy so special, and I really believe it is special, is it takes you off guard. There you see Leo telling Kafka nothing dirty I and mean, you know that you know that that's gonna establish who Kafka is and it also establishes who Leo is immediately and we've seen this in other areas before when there was an exposition at the returners hideout when Tara was asking about everybody you kind of see very simple exposition describe who, who people are um, and here you see Kafka kind of mocking Leo for being such a such a wuss I guess um, and then you know now you're gonna see his authoritativeness here take over so um, again, let's get back to it and just kind of keep an eye on the, the dialogue. Some of our people are prisoner inside. If any of them drink the water, who cares? They're the ones stupid enough to get caught by the enemy. See, again, cold, heartless, and whew, what a bastard. Oh, shit. I also love what they're about to do with the battles. Um, you see that we battle Kafka, we hit him once, he says ouch, and we say wait, and then we chase him down. Um, you're gonna see that a couple a couple of ways. And um, again, you know, when when you when you're in the middle of this playing, if you don't if you're not paying attention, um, I understand that you know you're not gonna see these things. But I've I play this game so long so much, you just look at this and you see it shows that he's a little bit of a coward. That he's all talk and bluster, which we which we, we kind of understood that a, a little bit uh, in the past. But you'll see here again, um, we're gonna fight him again, and uh, same exact thing's gonna happen. Um, it, it shows that he's not necessarily invincible. He's not 
you know, someone who's going to attack you and, and beat all, beat both of you guys in, in a heartbeat. So to establish him as kind of a human being, right? He's not supernatural. Um, he just is a villain who, who is good at cheating, you know? Um, and here I'm going to do a little uh, exploring that kind of uh, takes me off my, my target, but that's okay. Um, so, so yeah, so again, all of these, all of these things that I'm saying, every, every you know, piece of explanation, you want to, whatever you want to call it, is working toward painting a picture of who Kafka is. Now, earlier, and even when Kafka was talking, they painted a picture of who Leo was. Leo was a kind of a, a, guy, a human being who, who kind of cared about humanity and, and cared about his soldiers and, and was a good general. And his goal wasn't to just throw them all away. And, uh, but then you saw a little exchange with Kafka where he basically said, if there's soldiers in the, in the castle we're about to, we're about to uh, poison, I don't care because that's, that doesn't matter what matters. The most important thing is to win this war. And um, that is the, the top priority. Um, again, big contrast between Leo and Kefka. And I'm gonna let the, the little battle here play out as you can see a little more exposition on um, you know, what's about to happen as far as getting Kefka to the, um, the castle. Handle the rest. <clears throat> Whoa, hello. Come back. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna master that one. Nice guys, nice. That was a well fucking fought, baby. Hell yeah. So yeah, so we just won that battle. What you're gonna see now is the next level of the character development. I mean, we've been seeing that he's been talking about poisoning this place, um, you know, for part for the better part of this whole scene. Um, again, establishing him. Now you gotta remember, this is only like the third or fourth time maybe that he's appeared in the game, and I'm about six hours in. Five and a half or six. And then we see our warrior um, here in his castle in Doma. Um, he, again, this is gonna be, we're, we're gonna shift gears here in the same video to show more about character development. Now the first thing that has to happen, um, of course, is Kafka wins the battle, right? Wins this battle. Um, he poured the poison and you're gonna start seeing all the warriors and the, the guards just kind of dying from the, from the, the poison. And that, um, you know, th these kind of moments are big in any story where, you know, the villains win, right? The, it's it's the, uh, the Black Riders catching up to, to Frodo. It's, it's all those, um, you know, any, any major story you see, there's always a moment where it looks like the heroes are going to be vanquished. This, however, serves a bigger purpose. So you're going to see this knight who I have uh, named Sturm, which is after someone in the Dungeons and Dragons book. Um, he's going to see how this affects his king, right? He's a loyal warrior, and here you go, to the king with all haste. Um, and you're gonna see that, that the poison even affects the people that you know, he loves. So we'll, we'll pick it up here, and we'll uh, you know, come back here in a second. Sturm, your excellency. Let me also explain what you're about to see, and if you want to see this thing play out, you can see my stream um, elsewhere on this YouTube channel. But what you're about to see isn't just, you know, this, this man lost his king, um, and that's going to be, I fear for your family, you see him saying that there, uh, one of the last things he says, um, you know, he... he loses his king and which is his way of living and that's what he, he did now go to your family that kind of uh you know it's a premonition and you're going to see here very shortly um what happens to his family and what this is doing is this is setting up this knight who i named Sturm, of course as a tragic kind of hero right he's a, he's not going after this 
journey for the for the same reasons everyone else is. Um, yes, this this kingdom thought um, you know had, had warriors, so they thought they could they, they could they could fight. Um, but this individual warrior is now about to get his own individual motivation for being um, a part of what's about to happen in this world. And we're going to see here, uh, and not let it play out, uh, but we're going to see here that there is a um, deeper motivation for this guy, and you'll see it later on when he starts to bond with, with younger, some of the younger people. Um, and so, like, I, I want to say one thing before I kind of sign off here and let you watch the rest of this. This is storytelling. This is, in the 1990s, this is, video game was coming of age saying we can tell really good stories and here's one example of it and so let's uh, we'll play it out um and i think that that's actually a, that's gonna be a wrap for for this this video and i hope you enjoyed it um uh, and if you have any comments in the, in the please uh please fire away any questions uh you know hopefully you subscribe um but yeah so let's let's uh, and see what kind of things that i'm talking about uh during my stream here returners um that's pretty pretty dope Boom, there he is. So there you have it, my uh, first analysis video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe and, and uh, look out for more of these videos and click on one of those videos as well to, to follow up. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye.